Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Uh, I'm at home. <laughs> I uh, decided that uh, there was more at stake here than just uh, what I would pay cable-wise. I thought about these things for a few days. Amen, Jesus. And uh, Although I, I still think it's good advice, for especially for the older folks like myself <laughs> and for the younger, okay, that we get up, start standing up, moving around, amen, Jesus. And so I'll probably go down to the library and continue to, because I like that big board that's there. I'm going to try to make use of that when I begin to share again. Uh, but this interruption night, was a period of rest, amen, Jesus. Um, I uh, shared a little bit down at McDonald's and at the library, and not really anything of any consequence, I don't think. <clears throat> and I, I think, uh, amen, Jesus, I made mention of that uh, regarding what I shared and when I shared, that I thought that it was important that I begin to to wait until I had something significant that I believe I was being led in the Spirit of God to share and uh, kind of cut back on the the offerings. Because I pretty much gave my witness and testimony regarding what I believe is about to take place. And it's in the videos. Now whether or not anybody goes back through those videos to actually gather some fruit, whatever fruit is available there for you, that's entirely up to you. Um, I'm coming across this morning, first of all, uh, I, uh, the uh, truth of the matter is, I, I ended up getting a, because uh, my sister's in town, uh, I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but uh, she, she was out in the East Coast, they had taken that little RV, amen, Jesus, well, not little, it's about 36 foot, but, uh, and went out and visited uh, my brother-in-law's sisters, you know, and uh, they were there for a while, and they've made it back now, and they're here in Tucson with me at a uh, RV uh, campground. So um, because of that, and at the same time, just about the same time, I lose my internet. Actually, it was about a week before, and uh, so a guy had shared with you, you know, well, you know, maybe the Lord just wants me to get up and get out of here and you know, stop sitting down here so much, and the calling away from making videos so often, and I was finding myself on the internet, I don't know, five, six, eight hours a day sometimes. Uh, it's just too much sitting around when you get older. You need to get up and keep moving. But uh, anyway, the, what I was going to point out was uh, I went ahead because of my sister and, and uh, bought a little $15 phone, okay, and got some minutes on it, so we could stay in contact. Uh, you know, she's older than I am, and her husband's, you know, like 76. So from time to time, you know, if they need some help or something, I'd be available to them. Well, that got me thinking, <laughs> amen, Jesus, that, you know, many of you may or may not know that uh, I have what a magic jack system hooked up so that I can make calls and receive calls over the Internet. Well, when I thought about that, it dawned on me, you see, the Internet for me is, is really more than just the Internet. It's, it's my telephone service. So when you think about that, uh, about everybody pays at least 40 or $45 a month to have a phone. And then on top of that, you know, unless they have a bundled deal, they can pay upwards of $100 for having phone, Internet, and... Uh, What's the other? There's a, oh, and television, right? Well, I don't have television, but I do have the internet. And with my Magic Jack, I have phones, but I don't, uh, I don't pay uh, the exorbitant price that they have. I mean, I, I spend thirty dollars a year for the Magic Jack. That's it. So when you consider those things and you put them together, actually, my internet use uh, is my phone. And together, they cost me less than, I don't know, about 41 or $42 a month. 
phone and internet. So that's that's pretty wise use of the Lord's money right there. And it is a source of uh, fellowship for me. When I share on these videos, I'm, I'm speaking to you uh, where I normally don't have anyone else around me to share with, okay? I, uh, uh, I guys, like I said before, from time to time I've attempted to go down to this little church and I just, it's just hard for me um, I, I don't know what to say. It's just hard for me to get established there. I, I'm not in agreement with the whole purpose and the point of them coming together on Sundays and, and the fact that they do it on one day of the week that they've chosen. I mean, it's just, it's all this religious pattern of establishing the doctrines and traditions of men that I just, you know, I just don't see it being led by the Spirit of God. And uh, so... I, it's a mess. Nonetheless, amen, Jesus, uh, I do believe uh, that very soon now, very, very soon now, the Holy Spirit is going to move upon these households of faith. We're coming into that period of time now where I believe that individuals within their own fellowship and their own gathering are going to begin to rise up being filled with the Holy Spirit, just as Stephen was, uttering, okay, giving utterance, as the Son of Man returns in and among them through the spirit of prophecy, admonition, exhortation, and rebuke, which to me is that sign of Jonah, okay, that Jesus said would take place, as well as the sign of Noah and Lot. Now, uh, this is a significant period of time we're coming into right now. I just had some dreams that, uh, last night that uh, they're all urging that this tr transformation, this, this period of time, of transition, we'll call it, of which uh, sets up the separation of the wheat from among the tares. Because they're going to be coming out of there. One of two things, as I've shared before, is going to begin to take place. Either the bondwoman and her son, the false gospel, the gospel, the natural, the uh, uh, son of perdition, the unlit candles, the tares who have been in among, okay, either that gospel is going to get cast out her and her son, the bondwoman, cardinal mind, okay, or the wheat are going to come out of her. One of two is going to take place in every household of faith throughout the world all at the same time. It's all going to begin at the same time. And that's the witness to us of this being the hand of God moving upon these households of faith. Okay? You see these things begin to take place worldwide, and then that commotion in the marketplace, which is, I've shared with you, Jesus said that they had turned the Father's house, and I liken that onto these households of faith, that they had turned the Father's house into a den of thieves and a marketplace. So when the Word again says that there is a commotion in the marketplace, I believe that to be spiritual as well as natural. Because he says, once again shall I return to shape both earth and heaven. So I see heaven as being the marketplace of the households of faith and earth being the marketplace in the literal, natural realm. Both of these are about to get shaken. Now, to the extent of which makes the changes of which I've just spoken of, separating the wheat and the tares, and the beginning, uh, I believe, of tribulation. So, uh, very soon now, very, very soon now, 
Uh, I have a, I want to get started. Um, I mentioned the other day, so that you can start to see these parallels or the duality. Some of you do, some of you don't. Heaven and earth, the natural realm, the spiritual realm, the cardinal mind, the spiritual mind, darkness and the light. Amen. <laughs> These dualities, okay, of which exist. The old man and the young man, okay. Uh, the regenerated soul and the lighting of the candle within us, which is the spiritual man. And the natural man, who's, out, who's the outer court. He's the tabernacle, okay. Anyway, in which we house the Holy Spirit of God, Okay. Ye are the temples, collectively and individually. But nonetheless, in these, uh, in this work, in the work and will of the Father, as it begins to manifest itself, uh, I mentioned a little bit about the persecution uh, regarding religion worldwide as part of the perceived problem, <laughs> which in many ways it is, because uh, many of these households of faith, uh, the vast majority of the so-called Christian faith, okay, are no different than, than the Jewish faith was, uh, at the Jewish household of faith, was at the time of Jesus coming. There, it's hypocrisy. It's a religious spirit. And this is why a lot of people... You know, they they say these awful things about the Word of God because their their spiritual eyes have not been opened, okay? So, nonetheless, um, they don't realize it's, it's the, liter, the literal written Word in the Bible is simply a witness to the truth, Christ in us, okay? It's the testimony and the witness of those things which take place in our lives, literally. I mean, if we didn't have it, we'd be being led by any wind of doctrine. Okay, go this way, go that way, this way. This is the foundation, the Word of God. So, it came through the oral tradition by the unction of the Holy Spirit, of which men recorded what was said and placed in the Bible. So I I don't like to go back into that too much more because I just I don't I don't uh, deal with those folks uh, that say those things about the word of God. They they're obviously uh, 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 deceived. Okay? And there's a great deception out here and folks just, you know, everybody and I've gone over this time and time again you know, you know, nobody's deceived, but yet the word of God says there's the deception. There should be a great deception. I mean, no one has fallen away from the faith, yet the word of God tells us there will have been a great falling away. So you know, when you have contradictions in and among those people who claim the name of Jesus Christ, okay, and then one comes along and points these contradictions out to them. Okay, and they refuse to accept the truth of it. What can you do? <laughs> okay, all you can do is share what the Lord has given to you to share and hope and pray that they receive it and understand it and come out of where they're at and recognize that the finished work of faith needs to take place for all of us. None of us have a Attained, just like Paul said, to that degree of oneness, completion. He says, apart from them, we cannot be made complete, whole. And this again I've shared with you is the revelation, the revealed word of the Father coming through Paul in that testimony of that ministry of the first flock and the first assembly being the establishing of the spiritual body of Christ. And that that which 
opened the door, Jesus, he who opened the door, shall return to close that door, is the period of grace and time that we've gone through in the last 2,000 years. That door is about to be closed, but before it does, from the mercy and grace of the Father, the call to repentance, the awakening, okay, the shaking, the commotion in the marketplace, getting them awakened spiritually so that they trim their candles, their lights again. The only difference is, my brothers and sisters, that the wise receive the added oil. The oil comes through from the throne room of God through the sons and daughters of God just as that anointed word, the oil, came through the first son. Just as it came through the sons and daughters who were among the first flock. It begins to take place again as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Once again, to gather the wheat together, to place them in his barn. The anointed covering of the Holy Spirit, the oil, is that barn. It's that covering of which we enter into. It's the ark, like the blood. It's the blood testimony. A blood testimony relates itself to being brothers and sisters sons and daughters to Jesus the first son that's why it's called the blood testimony they're the family of God now in that family amen Jesus there are children and different measures of faith alright but my sheep shall hear my voice and it's this voice which has been being given to you, shared with you, hopefully, and will begin to be spread throughout the entire earth, explaining to you exactly the very same things I've been sharing with you for the last year. They will begin to manifest themselves throughout the entire world in the voice of many waters. This is what's getting ready to take place. This is the awakening. This is the Son of Man returning to find faith. The spirit of prophecy, admonition, exhortation, rebuke, to flee out or cast the bondwoman and her son out. One of the two. Now those that flee out will gather themselves together into those places who have cast out the bondwoman and her son. Some will gather together in their own homes. Some will gather together in places that have been established that have cast the bond woman and her son out who have repented. This is all about to take place and it will be impossible for anyone to deny it. Now the world goes on about its business while all of this is taking place which is why he says he comes as a thief in the night. And I've explained again, amen, Jesus, the Father has, that these three days of darkness I begin are about to begin right here, right now, amen, Jesus, for the world as the light begins to shine forth in the households of faith. Two things going on at the same time. We talked about the sons of darkness and the sons of light gathering together. The sons of light are coming forth and the darkness the demons and everything else been set free from the abyss it covers the earth, spiritually speaking, in a darkness. In the natural realm as well as in the spiritual realm. The light. But the difference is in the households of faith among those, okay, who are being obedient to the Holy Spirit of God. What did, what did the Lord say? Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So this rising up 
of the end time ministry is as the feet of the body of Christ. And those feet, amen Jesus, God places upon the enemy and makes them as a footstool for Jesus' feet, the spiritual body, the many-membered body, the footmen, who are the workmen of the eleventh hour. They're about to go forth throughout the world, and power and authority will be given to them over the demons, casting them out. So, <laughs> Jesus, we are just so close to this taking place. Amen, Jesus. Days, weeks, nothing more than a couple months, one way or the other, just so close, right at the very brink of this explosion, like my sister uh, chose an explosion church. Why don't we check her out uh, on a uh, live stream as soon as I get a chance to. Uh, I really, uh, I, I, it's the son of man. Some are receiving it more than others. Some, by faith, are allowing themselves to come up a little higher, as, as my sister has mentioned, you know, as the Lord has through her, okay? But if you're not willing to receive it, accept it, and understand it, am I saying that everything that is a vision or a dream or uh, supposed as a prophecy is actually God? No. No. That... that that would be foolish to believe. But just like everything else in this realm, okay, you have to use discernment to see if it's lining up with what, first of all, God has been saying to you and leading you in the Spirit according to the Word of God and in your fellowship with one another. Because that's where that witness comes from. Ye are my witnesses. All the many members of Ye are my witnesses. So in common, okay, in one accord, which is what we're being gathered into now, into this one accord, you will begin to see in that separation, all right, and in that gathering, amen, Jesus, that accord, especially when it comes to the fervent love of the brethren. Okay, which, amen, Jesus, is that really at the root of the falling away that's taking place. We, we need to return to our first love, and anyone who has ever studied or read the Word of God knows that the first love that we had, amen, Jesus, was given to us by the Holy Spirit in a fervent love. So great was the love among the brethren at that hour on the day of Pentecost that 3,000 souls were saved in one day. That's that love. Sacrificial, laying down of one's own wants and needs and desires for the sake of someone else, working together like the ants. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So anyway, I don't know. I, I, I'm really I'm just. It's going to be by the leading of the Holy Spirit, or it's not going to be at all for me. Okay, that's just the way it is. Uh, I just. I, I have thoughts of things that I, I, you know, believe by faith. Many need to come to understand that have not come to understand that. So I, I know there's a need for ministry in a lot of different aspects and some might say levels of understanding, okay, in order to bring this one accord in the unity and the love, fervent love of the brother, in order for that to take place, there are many different levels, many different ministries, uh, many different brothers and sisters who are going to be used to reach out, to touch, to gather in the wheat, that, that they're able to communicate on the same level, okay, and, and gather one another together. So 
This is like a no holds barred deal going on right here. Okay. Amen. Jesus, thank you, Father. Uh, keep the spirit of the joy of the Lord in your lives, brothers and sisters. Do not, okay, uh, get caught up in all of these things as if it were you or I somehow uh, doing this. It's not by might nor by power, but by His Spirit. So just let go and let God. You know, what Jesus said, my yoke is easy. It's not burdensome. It's a joy. So if you're being burdened and it feels, oh my God, uncomfortable and you're in fear and all these different anxieties and attacks of the devil and all that's still going on, it's, 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 uh, you're being tried and tested to see if you're going to, you know, the devil chooses to sift you like fine wheat. He's being allowed to do that. To bring forth the pure gold, the faith, your pure, the purifying the faith in you. And some fall away, unfortunately. Because that persecution and trials and fiery darts come after you and you end up turning away from God and the Word of God and away from fellowship and you know, just so it won't continue to be a burden to you. Well, that's, that's really not God, my brothers and sisters. If we come into an understanding and we grow in wisdom and that armor of which is placed upon us by the Holy Spirit is strengthened to the degree of which the death to self and the crucifying of the flesh nature and those things which by now be the chastisement of the Father, amen, for those who are have been around for a while, amen, Jesus, should be done. It should be done. It should be a done deal right now. Am I saying that we walk perfectly without falling short? No. It's just that any question and or any need for the devil to come in and do things is pretty much eliminated. It, it, it gets to the point where it just doesn't make any sense because he'll make repeated attempts at a period of time to see if he can move you one way or the other, okay? And when he finds he can't, okay, he goes about to another to try to, like a roaring lion, you know. Uh, he leaves you alone. The Lord rebukes you, devil, okay? <laughs> Amen, Jesus. So, just continue to mature, okay, in that word. Uh, uh, in your fellowship, in your love for one another. Uh, exhort, admonish, and rebuke. But do it in love. You know, I've shared that with you before. You know, when you know you're dealing with somebody who really hasn't been in the Word of God for very long, doesn't have a good, solid foundation established, okay, then, uh, you know, correction, okay, Admonition, exhort, you know, encourage, you know, try to do it uh, to the best of your ability and, and with love, you know. But with the older and them who have been in the Word and who have taken positions that may even be heresies, well, then you just got to give it to them the way it is. Amen, Jesus. And say, listen, brothers and sisters, you know, that this is the way it is, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you know, God knows I love you, but I don't agree with you. And I believe you're in error. Simple, plain, done. Let it go. And uh, if they want to continue to argue about it, just don't answer them. Okay? You don't have to answer every time somebody makes a comment. Just the devil's seeing if he can stir up your flesh. Okay? <laughs> Get you to rebel or come against that. You know? Because he knows what he's doing to you. By doing that, because a day or two later, because you'll find yourself saying things that you wish you hadn't said, and then a day or two later, while well, you're back to the Father asking Him to forgive you for what you had said. But you grow, you mature, you learn. I mean, God loves us, and we're going to make mistakes. That's all part of this 
Oh, deal. Amen, Jesus. So anyway, I'm going to uh, get out of here. And uh, the Lord bless you and keep you in Yeshua's name. Uh, and uh, have a blessed day. Amen? Amen.